So I had the XFR's windows tinted and they are smash and grab and they are tinted. So what I went for is I went for a 35% tint. I actually would have liked to have gone a little bit darker but the guys recommended that I go 35% because that's legal. Anything darker than that um, is illegal. So the thing is, the way it works is if you go 50%, it's a little lighter. If you go 35%, it's darker. So what it means is it allows 35% of the light through. If you go 20%, then that only allows 20% of the light through. I saw it, uh, I think it was a EPES having its windows tinted and that person had actually gone for 20% tint and that was rather dark considering but you know keeping in mind that the car does have a rear blind really doesn't matter because I can put the blind up and it actually makes the car darker inside and you can't really see much from behind you also can't see much from the sides now I haven't tinted the front glass obviously because that is completely illegal in our country the way that it works is they actually take the film and they put it on the outside of the windows and then they cut a template out. So they cut a template out for the rear glass on the outside and then they stuck uh, pieces of film on the outside of the side glass and then cut a template on the left side only. And then they took those templates that they cut for the left side and they just cut an identical template out for the right hand side. And then they sprayed some kind of soapy solution on the inside of the glass to allow the film to not only stick but for them to be able to move the film around until they have it in place entirely. I was a little bit concerned about the area around the high beam brake light at the rear because they used some kind of flat thing to get the tint to stick there and there were a few bubbles there but they went away after a while and they used a heat gun during the process. It was quite interesting to watch them do it because you know, I've never seen my cars get tinted before. I've had tint on several of my cars before, but I've never actually seen it done. And, you know, to actually see them do it and see them in action is quite phenomenal because there were some windows they were actually not happy with and then they just, you know, ripped the film off and they started from scratch and cut a new template out and started again. They did that on the uh, left rear quarter window on the rear door and they also did it with the driver's door on my side on the right hand side i must say i'm very very happy with the final results because the there are no bubbles whatsoever and all around the edge where the window tint actually meets the um you know the, the blackout of the glass you can see a, a tiny little line and it looks so neat the way they've actually done it um, I don't know how they get it done, but you know the guy when they do the doors they actually rip the top part of the door pad off and almost died when I saw that because I didn't even know you could actually do that without loosening some screws and bolts. But they did that and they have to get the tint way down behind the actual uh, rubber, the door rubber, in order to you know not let it get stuck when you turn the window down. Um, after you turn it up. I wasn't allowed to actually use my windows for about 48 hours after that. They stuck stickers all over my, my window uh, buttons on the inside of the car so I wasn't able to use the window. So all I did is I, I just let the car stand for a few days and I didn't even bother driving it because I was afraid that I might accidentally push the button. Now I'm pretty sure that within 24 hours it was actually dry but I thought I'll listen to what they said and I just left it for 48 hours. I actually drove the car I think for the first time only three days later and I was very very happy with the tint because not only that it also cuts UV coming into the car and it keeps the car much cooler. Now keep in mind I live in a very very hot country it gets very very hot here in summer. Our summers can get up to 35 40 degrees in a day and you know if we ever go somewhere with a car and it's standing in the sun um, you don't want to get back to a really really hot car. I know I've got the sunroof I can let all the heat out and by pressing the key fob button I can you know do the global open which will open all four windows as well as the sunroof at the same time and that's one of the tricks I actually love about this car is that you can actually do that so you know if you haven't tried that with your Jag yet on a hot day really give that a try. It's a nice 
little trick and it works well even from a distance. And like I said to you guys, hold the key fob to your temple and it amplifies the distance of your key fob. So, you know, if you're approximately 100 meters from your car and you hold the key fob and you hold down the open button, it'll actually open all your windows and your sunroof then already. And by the time you get to your car, a lot of the heat has already dissipated and left the car. But like I said, the other purpose that this actually serves is it does serve a security purpose in terms of smash and grab. Now, around about 60 to 70% of cars sold in South Africa now actually have smash and grab on because we have a lot of smash and grab incidents in our country where people stop at traffic lights and suddenly they just take a sinker and they smash a window broken and they grab whatever they see lying in the car and they run off. And you know, there are many videos on YouTube about that happening in this country. So for that reason, most people fit smash and grab and your insurance loves it if you do have it fitted. Not only that, it also deters people from seeing what is actually in your car if it is tinted. So I think the 35% tint, which is the same as my previous X260's uh, window tinting, um, I think it really enhances the car, you know, aesthetically, and it also enhances the car from a security point. And it was just very interesting watching them fit this. And it took about 45 minutes for them to do the entire job. It didn't take long. I was quite amazed by how fast it actually went. They've got their little scrapers and things that they use. And I was also worried about them, you know, breaking the lines in the rear window because the rear window actually has the aerial, the antenna, is built into the rear demister. And if any of these lines are broken, it will break your reception on your radio. So you won't be able to get AM, FM, and neither will you be able to get DAB. That was a major concern of mine, but they do so many cars. And the, the nice thing of it is they were actually situated inside the Jaguar dealership. So all I had to do was drive to the dealership, uh, drive the car up five floors where they are situated. And this dealer is actually a Jaguar dealer, plus their Land Rover dealer, Range Rover, and they also do Mazda and Ford. So while I was driving up, I saw quite a lot of Ford Mustangs and I saw a lot of Jaguars. But I think on the whole, I'm very, very happy with the job that they did. And I'm gonna show you guys some beauty shots of the car with the tinting as well. You know, as I've been talking, I've been showing you guys a little bit of the process of how they went along. It's extremely interesting to see them in action. I think this car being white with dark wheels really, really looks great with tinted windows. I think you guys have also noticed that my rims have changed and the Nevi rims were damaged again. I took the car for Roadworthy and the roadworthy guy took the car out for a test drive and before I could say or do anything I wanted to go with him but before I could do anything he drove out with the car he just drove straight out and um, he came back about 10 minutes later and we got on the highways shortly after I got the roadworthy done for the car and I got my roadworthy certificate we got on the highway and the car had a vibration and it was coming through the steering wheel so I immediately knew that something was wrong with the wheels because he must have hit literally every pothole that he could find. I took the wheels back to the people who repaired them and they confirmed that all four wheels were actually damaged. So I've already had them repaired. But what I did is I bought a set of 20 inch Range Rover wheels and believe it or not, the 285 30 rear tires actually fitted those 8.5 J 20 inch wheels, Range Rover wheels. and they don't look too bad, they actually look very nice. And I'm gonna just leave them on the car for now until they get damaged, and when they get damaged, I'll swap the Nevis around with these and then have these repaired, and then I'll just keep these as spare again until the Nevis get damaged again. Thank you for watching, thanks for your interest, and stay tuned for the next video. Cheers, bye.